trading sequences are a recurring type of quest in the Zelda series. Though each sequence is different, they usually involve starting with some innocuous item and finding a character who needs it who will trade the first item for an item of their own. This chain of trades continues until Link receives the final item in the sequence, often a powerful piece of equipment or upgrade. The first of this style of side quest in the series appears in Link's Awakening. According to the late great Satoru Iwata, this side quest was inspired by a Buddhist story popular in Japan, known as the Straw Millionaire. The story follows a hard-working peasant who prays to the Goddess of Mercy for riches. The goddess instructs him to take the first thing he touches and travel west. And so he does, carrying with him a piece of straw. On his journey, he catches an irritating horsefly and ties it to the straw. This insect on a leash appears to calm a baby in the next town, and so the child's mother trades it for three oranges. He later trades these oranges to a dehydrated woman in return for a silk cloth, and then the cloth for a weak horse from a traveling samurai. After nursing the horse back to health, it's noticed by a millionaire and the man is invited back to his home. The millionaire has a daughter, the same woman that the man had saved from dehydration with the oranges. The man marries the millionaire's daughter, finally escaping poverty. Link's Awakening's trading side quest is somewhat similar. Link can win the Yoshi doll at the trendy game, then trade this with Mama Sha in return for a ribbon. The ribbon can be traded to Chow Chow, the tiny chain chomp, in return for dog food, which can then be traded to Sail, a crocodile who'll eat the entire tin can then offer you some bananas in return. Link's Awakening is a strange game. These bananas are then used to pay Kiki, a hungry monkey who built the bridge to Canalette Castle, leaving behind a single stick. This stick can be traded to Taran, who's trying to knock a bee's nest out of a tree, but gets stung. The honeycomb from these bees can be traded to the chef in Animal Village who's run out of ingredients in return for a pineapple. The pineapple is traded to Papal, who's lost on Tal Tal Mountain and is starving, in return for a hibiscus flower he's picked. The flower is given to Christine, who believes that a man should offer a lady flowers, in return for a love letter addressed to Mr. Wright, a strange man who lives south of the swamp. Mr. Wright is lonely, and writes out letters to people, but never receives replies. Except for the love letter. However, it turns out Mr. Wright is basically being catfished. Christine's love letter addressed to him includes a photograph of the woman Mr. Wright believes he's talking to, bizarrely depicting Princess Peach. He'll offer Link a broomstick in return for the delivery. The broomstick is traded to Grandma Yahoo, who's broken her own through excessive sweeping, and she'll offer up a fishing hook. This is traded to a fisherman who's lost his hook, who in return gives Link his next catch, a necklace. The necklace belonged to a mermaid, but was swept away by the water, and when Link returns it, she'll offer one of her scales in return. The scale can be placed in a statue of the mermaid, revealing the entrance to a cave, inside which Link finally finds the magnifying lens, the final item in the sequence. The lens can be used to see things that are usually invisible, very similar to Ocarina of Time's Lens of Truth. The lens could be used to obtain the boomerang from a cave on Torombo shores, or to read the book in the library which allows him to navigate the windfish's egg. Link's Awakening's trading sequence forces you to interact with a huge variety of different characters, each with their own predicaments and their own needs. Finishing it isn't strictly necessary to complete the game, as you can navigate the windfish's egg through trial and error, but it also rewards you with the boomerang, a powerful weapon which can be used in the original game to kill the final boss in a single hit. Just like the Straw Millionaire story, Link begins with a seemingly useless item, the Yoshi doll, and trades it with a long chain of people, solving each of their problems as he does. Except Mr. Wright, I guess, who's still unaware that he's actually writing love letters to a goat. Link's Awakening famously introduced a lot of things which became recurring tropes in Zelda games, and especially inspired the next entry in the series, Ocarina of Time. In both games, Link is guided by a mysterious owl, he meets Malin and her father Talon, just like Marin and Taran, and embarks on a trading quest. Ocarina of Time's trading sequence is, by far, the most famous in the series. In Goron City, Link can find Medigoron, who'll mention that he's working on something cool. As an adult, Link can buy this something cool for 200 rupees, the giant's knife, a massive two-handed sword that deals double the damage of the master sword. 
however, it breaks after a couple of hits. The giant's knife is a tease for the reward for Ocarina of Time's trading sequence. Let's do this again. Link can buy a pocket egg in Kakariko Village. It takes a day to hatch, but when it does, the cuckoo can be used to wake a sleeping Talon and make him return to his job at Lon Lon Ranch. The cuckoo lady will be impressed with how you looked after the pocket cuckoo and will give Link Kojiro, a blue cuckoo who belonged to her brother. This brother can be found in the Lost Woods, sat under a tree, and he'll trade you an odd mushroom in return for Kojiro, asking that you take it to Granny in the Kakariko Potion Shop within three minutes. Granny uses the mushroom to brew an odd potion, claiming that it's the strongest medicine she's ever produced, but that it won't work on a monster. Returning to the Lost Woods, Link finds Fado in the place of the strange man. The Kakiri rather ominously explains that the man has gone, as everyone who gets lost in these woods becomes a Stalfos. She'll offer the man's saw in return for the potion. This saw can be taken to Gerudo Valley, where the head carpenter will claim that it's his, and that he'd left it with his old lady. He claims that his Goron tool has broken, and that he was going to head to Goron City to have it fixed, but instead offers to trade it for the saw, giving Link the broken Goron sword. The sword was made by Big Goron, Medi Goron's brother, who lives on top of Death Mountain. He wants to fix the broken sword, but an eruption of the volcano has irritated his eyes, so he can't work without eye drops, which he claims you can get from Zora's domain, giving Link a prescription. King Zora will let Link know that he only has the ingredients for the drops, not the drops themselves, and will give Link an eyeball frog, suggesting that he take it to the lake scientist within three minutes which Link does, and the scientist will make the eye drops. Finally, Link needs to get the drops to Big Goron within four minutes, which can be a little difficult, but if he does, the smith will agree to fix the sword, giving Link a claim check. After three days, the repairs are done, and Link obtains the mighty Big Goron sword, a blade identical to the giant's knife, but completely unbreakable. Even ignoring this trading sequence's awesome reward, there's a lot of character development happening within this quest. Talon wakes up and goes on to take Lon Lon Ranch back from Ingo, and we learn a lot about the relationships in Kakariko Village. The master craftsman is implied to be the son of Granny, and the father of the man who vanishes in the Lost Woods. When Link is a child, this man can be found sulking underneath the tree in the village at night, claiming that he finds everyone, even his own parents, disgusting. His decision to leave Kakariko for the Lost Woods could have been because of how unhappy he was there, which would make his eventual transformation into a Stalfos all the more depressing. Majora's Mask continued the streak of including trading quests with the business scrubs, though it's far less intricate than the previous two. Link can offer a moon's tear to the business scrub in Clocktown, who's already sold out of his wares and wants to bring a present home to his wife. He'll trade the stone for the deeds to his plot in Clocktown. In the southern swamp, Link finds another business scrub who says he'd prefer to set up shop in a livelier place. Of course, Link can trade the Clocktown deeds for this Deku Scrub's Swamp title deeds. This trend continues for the other regions of the game, Link helps the Deku Scrubs trade their plots of land until each is happy, earning himself a piece of heart each time he does so. It's a fun little sequence and gives the player a great sense of progression, but it doesn't stand out as much as the other two do in terms of rewards and in terms of character. But because it's in Majora's Mask, this sequence resets every time Link turns back time. Once you unlock a new business scrub, you'll probably have to retrace your steps to reobtain the title deeds it wants, so maybe it's a blessing in disguise that the sequence isn't more complicated. Redoing something like Ocarina of Time's trading quest multiple times over would suck. The series returns to more conventional trading quests with the twin Oracle games, which each feature a sequence resulting in Link obtaining the Noble Sword. Unlike Link's Awakening, these trading sequences are both entirely optional extras. No parts of them are required to complete the game. In Seasons, the quest begins by lighting the torch in Dr. Left's house, allowing him to finally see what he's reading and writing. He'll give Link the Cuckoo Dex, which can be traded to Malon, who's looking after her father's cuckoos, in return for an egg. 
You can trade the egg to Maple the Witch, who says that these eggs are all the rage with girls. And because you're a boy, you don't need it. She'll trade you a ghastly doll in return. Inga is too hot, so wants something creepy to send chills down her spine to cool her down, and trades an iron pot for the doll, which can be filled with lava soup in Subrosia. The soup is given to Big Goron to cure his cold, he'll give you a Goron vase, which Ingo will trade for a fish. The fish is then traded to an old man in order to lure his cat from out of a tree, who'll give you a megaphone in return, which Talon will swap for a mushroom. Syrup needs the mushroom to make a potion, so will swap you for a wooden bird, which Tick Tock needs to make a cuckoo clock, and will swap you for some engine grease. The grease makes Guru Guru's windmill spin faster, and he'll reward you with his phonograph. Finally, playing this phonograph for a business scrub will cause him to reveal the way to get to his secret spot, where the noble sword is found. Age's trading sequence is much in the same vein as Seasons. Helping a ghost move on to the afterlife rewards Link with the Poe Clock, which can be given to a postman who doesn't know the time in return for stationery. This can be given to a hand in a toilet to use as paper in return for a stink bag. All right. The stink bag is given to a toke with a blocked nose in return for some tasty meat, which can be given to the happy mask salesman in return for the doggy mask. Mamamu Yan, the dog breeder, will trade the mask for a single dumbbell, which can be given to Thomas so that he can work out and get the girls. In return, Thomas rips off his apparently fake moustache and gives it to you. The moustache is given to a wannabe comedian in return for a... joke, which Link can tell to cheer up Decadin in return for a book. Maple will trade the book for an oar, which is given to Rafton so that he can compete in a raft race in return for the sea ukulele. An old Zora loves this instrument and will offer up a broken sword in return, which Patch offers to fix if Link completes his ceremony. The ceremony is a mini-game, where Link needs to constantly press switches to prevent a minecart running over the sword as it's being repaired, all the while fighting off hard hat beetles and pushing them into pits in the corners of the room. Once beaten, Patch repairs the broken blade into the noble sword. The trading sequences in the Oracle games are brilliant. They're both completely optional, so while the length of the quests could be seen as tedious, they're not needed to finish the game. But doing so is incredibly satisfying. Again, just like with Ocarina of Time and Link's Awakening, these quests involve interacting with and helping a massive number of different characters, forcing the player to immerse themselves in these worlds. The Wind Waker followed up with its own trading quest, though it's a little different to the others. Instead of trading one item for another in a predetermined sequence, the Wind Waker sequence involves trading and swapping decorative items between the three Goron merchants across the Great Sea. Each time Link receives a new item, the merchant will agree to ship more of them to Zunari on Windfall Island, increasing the number of items that he sells. By trading different items between the three merchants, Link can swap from the town flower all the way up to the shop guru statue, winning himself a piece of heart. Setting up shipments for both the exotic and the sea flowers will result in Zunari offering you the magic armor, a family treasure of his that renders the wearer invulnerable as long as they have rupees, or magic power in the original version. This quest is… fine. The rewards are good, and it's cool to see Windfall Island progressively more decorated as you complete the quest, but it's not as unique or as interesting as the other trading quests. Instead of trading items that each solve a problem for a character, you're just trading various stock between the same three merchants. A more conventional sequence returned in the Wind Waker's sequel, Phantom Hourglass, where Link moves between various travelling ships to trade items. Let's do this one more time. Defeating a set of enemies within the Man of Smiles' ship will reward Link with the hero's new clothes, a little nod to the second quest outfit from the Wind Waker, and the Emperor's new clothes. This outfit is traded to Naive, the aptly named wannabe hero, in return for a kaleidoscope. This is then traded to one of the Ho-Ho tribe, the only one without a kaleidoscope of his own, in return for a guard notebook. This is swapped for a wood heart by Naive, Naive's brother. And finally, the wood heart can be given to the old wayfarer, who wants food to give to his love, Joanne. The old wayfarer explains that he's recently found something valuable stored on a chest on Bannon Island, his home. 
Upon returning to the island, Link encounters a giant eye plant, a mini-boss enemy which was previously fought earlier on in the game. It attacks by spitting seeds and can be defeated with a cannon. After destroying the monster, Link can finally get to the chest on the island, winning himself the Swordsman's Scroll, unlocking the Great Spin Attack. This is one of the shortest trading sequences in the series, but I really like it. Each item is strongly linked to the person you're meant to give it to, many of the items apparently even have their owner's names written on them. The quest features a mini boss fight and unlocks a great optional extra, which is exactly what you want from a side quest. Zelda's trading sequences are some of my favourite side quests in the series, in particular those in Link's Awakening and in Ocarina of Time. While they can be tedious at times, they're incredibly satisfying. Each item in the sequence is not only a step towards a great unlock like the Big Goron Sword or the Boomerang, they're each a solution to a character's problem. Trading sequences force you to interact with a variety of different NPCs, and allow different NPCs to interact with one another with Link as a medium. Since Phantom Hourglass, we haven't really seen a quest which fits this mould. While I wouldn't want to see a carbon copy of Ocarina of Time's trading sequence appear in every new Zelda game, I would love to see something similar appear in a world as vast and rich as I hope that Breath of the Wild's sequel has. Discovering a seemingly useless item, and just like the Straw Millionaire, slowly trading your way up to a powerful upgrade, all the while helping and interacting with a wide variety of characters. Thanks for watching this video. What do you think of Zelda's trading sequences? Are you a fan or are you not? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.